everyone, my name is Katie. Welcome back to my channel. We are doing a lovely romance uh, series of sorts for February. And if you caught my last video, it was about our favorite couples, our favorite tropes, why these couples work, and now we're going to take it a step further for your writing. So last time was kind of like more booktube-ish, and now we're switching to author tube gears. So if you haven't already, if you're writing romance at all, subplot, full plot, and you don't have romance in the beat, I highly, highly recommend it. It's a fantastic craft book for your romance writing. They break things down into four parts where it's the setup, falling in love, retreating from love, and fighting for love. And while this can get very formulaic and you'll start to just see this pattern in all romances, there are still ways that you can mix it up so that it's not predictable. You I will also get to kind of vary that based on who your characters are, what their flaws are, their wants, their needs, um, all of that. And especially if it's polar opposite, like their external goals, that's really going to help you. So say um, someone's fighting to save their family bookstore and this other guy is trying to come in and take it over as a business prospect or something. Um, that's opposition and they're going to be thrown together in some type of battle and she, you know, will get to like show him why it's important and you know, all that stuff. So it really depends on what your story is about and like that'll let you vary it. Okay. So typically you're going to introduce both your characters. They're going to have their meet cute but they're also going to have their no way for why this is not going to work. And this is where you really get to play on their different shards of glass and their external ones. But we all know that they're about to get thrown together. So that's where you can also vary um, your story and make it different. And of course, all your subplots are going to be different as well. So what friends do they have? What's their family life like? Their job, school, whatever. What else is going on in their lives? For the love interest. You don't just want anyone, okay? You're gonna want someone who maybe they complement each other or maybe they're opposites and uh, help each other that way. Um, you're gonna want someone who they can kind of do this with and not be like two separate people that you're trying to push together. Um, the reader's gonna want it to make sense. They're gonna want to see that these people help each other and um, they have grown together and are like, you know, had their character arc into the next uh, phase of their story. I just finished reading Instant Karma and I laughed so hard at all the Goodreads <laughs> reviews, but the dude character in that was like such a peach. Oh my gosh, he was like perfect. And there was another, um, what was that other book I read? I think it was by the book where the guy was again like, really nice and sweet and it's like the girl who's got the issues like the main character and so um I thought that was interesting it didn't really work in instant karma because the girl was just like a hot mess but um I thought it was interesting to flip that because normally it's like the main character who's like kind of good although Emma in my not Emma Riley in my project Emma she's She's got quite the arc to overcome for herself too. I gave my her love interest like seemingly bad qualities as well. So if you're afraid of like the storyline after they break up, like being too, cause you know like, oh, after they break up, they're gonna get back together. Like make it difficult for them. Make the reader second guess. Have so much pile on top of them that you're literally like, wow, can they even recover from this? Like. Are they going to forgive each other? Are they going to reconcile? Um, is their grand gesture even going to matter? I tried to mix that up in my hashtag goals because she did the grand gesture, but it wasn't what her love interest wanted. And so um, she has to like scramble to figure out something else, which I got from Save the Cat, the beat sheet as well, where it's like Hightower Surprise, like, oh, your grand gesture didn't work though, so oh, you better figure out something else. And I have a real good plot twist. Oh my gosh, it's terrible, but at the end of my nano novel, um, it's very unpredictable as well. And I didn't think it was going to end that way, so it was even a surprise to me. Um, I mean, I did think it was going to end that way, but I didn't want it to, so. Mm. But yeah, I would just think like researching books that you love and the couples that you love and seeing stories. Like if you read a story and you're like, wow, that actually surprised me with how that ended. Um, reflect on that and analyze that but you're gonna want to hype up tension throughout your story and the stakes and I love when characters are like 
they don't want to like the other person but they're kind of flirty about it anyways but they're just like get away from me though because I don't need to like you right now um, you're always gonna have obstacles that are gonna stand in their way gonna remind them of their wound remind them of why they don't want to be that with that person even though they can't stop staring at their lips or whatever just like really explore your who you're putting in that story and build around them a cast that is gonna help support that. So um, someone that's opposite of them in some respect that's gonna help them learn and grow that thing and that'll make them be a better person for their love interest but just mix it up if you think the storyline is bland and very predictable your reader will too so try to think of something else some other subplot that's going to come shake it up um something that's going to really just help grow your story art grow your characters um and make them kind of like have to lean on each other and grow and then before they dissolve and then come back <laughs> um but i mean hey if it's not a happily ever after it doesn't have to be but just make sure when you think about it in the beginning if they have opposite wants and goals um like project how they're going to change to end up together at the end that's why outlining is really important i'm definitely also a discovery writer so i kind of figure that out later and then i do a lovely whole rewrite but i think this part the dynamics of the love interest and the story as a whole is really fun for me and you can explore so much like with my nano book i have a risk taker and a non-risk taker and she is trying to get him to take risks like the whole story and um, they end up like breaking up kind of, and he takes a risk for her and that's his grand gesture. And so it's just like, think of the things that are going to like their flaw or their fear in instant karma. Um, he was terrified of doing karaoke, but to make it up to her, he does karaoke and sings like a song about her and so that gets her to be like oh okay he does like me or whatever so it's just really fun like plant those seeds and then bring it up later too and just like make readers hearts melt <laughs> I feel like I just rambled really instead of giving all tips in this video and I'm super sorry <laughs> I definitely was gonna have like a bulleted helpful thing and that didn't happen but let me know if y'all have any questions down below or any comments at all I hopefully this was like new or like you could just agree with me and be like yeah yeah, that's what I've learned about writing romance too like <laughs> have fun and good luck writing your romance subplot or full plot let me know what your favorite parts to write about are mine are definitely the fun and games happy valentine's month happy february <laughs> and I will see y'all in the next video bye